Okay, fish, you gotta get everyone's attention or else they're gonna click off the video, because Artemis Fowl isn't as popular as other young adult series. You gotta make a bold statement. Knock their socks off. Uh, Artemis Fowl is better than Harry Potter. I read the entire Artemis Fowl series twice before I read Harry Potter once. I didn't read any Harry Potter books until after I'd watched all the movies. Okay, I'm actually glad they removed the Society for, for the Promotion of Elfish Welfare from the film adaptation of Goblet of Fire. Reading is a pastime with which I have a long and complicated history. Almost as bad as my track record with Star Wars opinions. But don't worry, I'll break it down for you. My reading history is not unique in the slightest. Used to read a lot. Everything changed when the school teachers attacked. Mandatory reading with pre-selected books. The heck is this? Use video games to cope. Reading decreases. Get friends to play video games with you. Reading decreases. Watch more YouTube. Reading decreases. Social media. Reading decreases. Reading is boring. Reading decreases. Reading school no longer mandatory. Hey, reading is pretty cool if you try it sometime. The only instance my reading journey deviated from the traditional trajectory was maybe the summer reading challenge my bank hosted when I was a kid. I could read 10 books to earn $10. I was imbued with a sense of capitalism at a young age. But even outside financial motivation, my inclinations for text vocations kept my youthful mind with stories a reason. With lightsabers, because 90% of what I read was Star Wars. High five, me. Yeah. Legacy of the Jedi, Secrets of the Jedi. In one edition, Jedi Quest, Jedi Apprentice, a lot of Jude Watson, apparently. The Life and Legend of Obi-Wan Kenobi, which had the coolest cover. And whenever I went to the library, I would collapse and absorb the Star Wars visual dictionaries. It wasn't just Star Wars books that captivated my attention. There were also the Indiana Jones novelizations. But it wasn't just books on existing intellectual property that captured my attention. There was also the Cryptid Hunter, Marty and Grace series, The Chosen, The Hobbit, a magic treehouse garnish. One series, however, stood above the rest. A young adult fantasy series that melted real and magical worlds. Bringing together likable characters where potential enemies to become friends as the protagonist adjusts to the previously undiscovered world that lies beneath the very nose of every human on this earth. Percy Jackson. <laughs> Just kidding. Haha. <laughs> Funny joke. That's not the title of the video. I've actually never read Percy Jackson. Ugh! Artemis Fowl. Starring the titular character, Artemis Fowl is a 12-year-old non-blue human megamind, I could have just said genius, from Ireland who comes into contact with a world of fairies, including elves, pixies, dwarves, centaurs, and more, that slay- that slay? That stray slightly from your standard fantasy creature stereotypes. These creatures come with a main dish of magic with a side of highly advanced technology. But the main difference between Artemis Fowl and your standard YA fantasy series leading character is that Artemis is... <sighs> uh, I don't want to make the joke, but it's right freaking there. Where's in the... Where's... <sighs> the bad guy. Duh. He's the steer right through your soul. Guess your intentions know what town you visited last week because of the dust under your fingernails threaten your life with a glance of BFFs with more yarded plans to steal one metric ton of gold from the fairies but can't do any physical activities to save its life. Criminal mastermind. <laughs> Artemis's introductory scene is freaking iconic. He and his butler, named Butler, are sitting at a Vietnamese cafe in the sweltering heat, waiting to meet with a contact about a potential fairy sighting when a waiter arrives at their table. Within the following exchange, Owen Colfer establishes Artemis's cold personality, his exasperated near ruthlessness, and the lengths Artemis is willing to go to get what he wants. But in the next scene, Colfer counters these details with the revelation that Artemis isn't completely evil. He has a plan that will come to fruition at the expense of others, but he also has professional and personal reasons for doing so. 
Having a morally gray protagonist perfectly set up for a wonderful character arc is fantastic, especially for a young adult novel. Ah, what a freaking great book series. I remember absolutely losing it when the final entry was published, and I later reread all eight books in a week. Proof I have improved little as a person over the past 10 years. Fred. But man, would I still love to see Artemis on the big screen. Alas, nothing like that has happened. Same thing with Percy Jackson fans, which is surprising because you think they'd, they would have uh, adapted that into a film by now, or, or two, but I don't know, I'm just guessing, I'm just throwing things out here. Honestly though, I think it would work best as an animated series. Think about it, a highly stylized art direction to unify the magic, the technology, and locations, give strong characterized appearances to the main cast, plus a series is a great way to spend more time with characters to develop their personalities, their goals, struggles, relationships, and more, which is especially important for a morally great character like Artemis. I'd love the style to be a mix of Arcane and the Artemis Fowl graphic novel. I mean, look at Butler's neck! That is thick with three and a half C's! Wait. Do you guys smell the end product of the greedy corporation that took a beloved franchise and stripped it of all personality and everything that made it unique in order to appeal to as wide of an audience as possible, only to realize that force-feeding the resulting mess of a script to a well-known director and actors with significant potential was not in fact making a good movie, and tried to salvage the wreck in the editing room by cutting out any remaining connections to their source material, but then finally said screw it and tried to brush the disgrace the long-term fans of the books under the rug with a direct streaming release instead of the initial plan to put the movie in theaters? My hopes for an Artemis Fowl movie began when I first read the book. And not just because of how great the story was, but also because there was an actual advertisement for the upcoming film adaptation in my edition of the novel, which is like 20 years old. And the audiobooks narrated by Nathaniel Parker astounded me, and in combination with the aforementioned graphic novel, reinforced the idealistic image of an Artemis Fowl movie in my head. Look at his neck! That's the first time I said aforementioned in like five years! No, not that that's the only way of doing things, that's just what I thought. You're, you're a big strong movie adaptation on your eye. I just meant that run, 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 run. For many years, I solemnly sulked, waiting for a whiff of Artemis movie action. The mere idea of an adaptation hung in limbo, with rumors seeping through the cracks of reality, infesting my mind with teases of hope and elements of concern. No, no, they're not doing a movie, it's been too long. They are doing a movie? No. Yes, they are! This is great! Finally! Wait, they're combining the first two books into one movie? How does that... that doesn't make any... They're, they're, they're gonna stick to the books, right? Oh no. When I was desperate to be optimistic, I thought to myself, hey, we're still in the room, we're still in the rumor stage. Everyone calm down, it could still work. They haven't even revealed the cast yet. Hey, this isn't too bad. They actually found an Irish child actor to play Artemis. That's nice. The actress they found to play Holly Short also looks promising. Josh Gad is the dwarf Maltz Jiggums. That could work. They changed the race of Butler. I mean, okay. But how's his neck, though? Judy Dungeon's Commander Root? The gruff, buff, tough, cigar chewing, sharp shooting, foul balved, <laughs> foul pun. Beat rude, red, angry faced, lower elements, police commander? He's now an old lady. I'm sorry, Dame Judy Dench, but you are 87, so I'm legally allowed to say that you're old. And it's not like the changes they made with Butler. I mean, anytime you change the race of a character, it's, it's a little weird. But at least he's still a big, intimidating guy. Root's transformation is just... <sighs> but I'm not done completing yet. Changing Root's character to be a woman is not only bad for his character, but it's also bad for Holly's character, because she is supposed to be the first female LEP recon officer. You're taking away one of Holly's unique traits and challenges. And Root is supposed to be extra tough on Holly's performance, not just because she's a girl, but because she's the first female officer, and he wants her to be the best. 
to set a good example, to be a role model for all the other girls in the underground who are aspiring to join the Lower Elements Police. Why, Disney? In your search for strong female characters, you've become the very thing you swore to destroy. Ah, okay. So, it could still be fine. I mean, I don't like some of the casting decisions, but most of them are decent. Plus, they haven't even released a teaser trailer yet. Ooh, the tree from the book. Ooh, the underground from the book. Ooh, the fairy from the book. Ooh, they're wearing neon green suits. Ooh, frick, it looks like Irish spy kids. What's the point? I stared at a luminescent screen placed before my eyes. Ignorance to any further meaning, the moving images tried to burn into my sockets. It was all lost. The story, Artemis Fowl, the Irish mastermind, head of his father's criminal kingdom at age 12, had been killed. Corporately. Before me played 2300 frames of faked fame, a stolen name but no soul. Criminal mastermind? <laughs> Goody two-shoes, unaware of his father's profession. Calm, cool, and collected? No. A child. Intellectually dominant while physically incompetent and uncompromising on all clothing articles outside of his three-piece suits? <laughs> Impossible. A surfing, fencing bred boy so opposite to Artemis that he may as well be Orion. As a reference to Book 7, by the way. <coughs> I just I just don't understand the disparity between good and bad book movies. I, I get it. The main character of Artemis Fowl, the boy himself, is the bad guy. Is the bad guy. And you don't want to teach kids the wrong lesson. However, if you think that, I'm not certain you actually read the books. Because the whole point of his character is how he improves. How he makes friends and becomes a better person along the way. <sighs> Even if the Disney Artemis Fowl movie was great, which the majority of people think it's not. But even if it was, even if it was, it would not be an Artemis Fowl movie because they stripped the characters of their original personalities and mangled the plot to be unrecognizable as the source material. I'm just sad because there was a lot of potential in the movie, both conceptually and with the cast, besides Judy Dench, because I honestly don't know. I have no idea how they got from point A to point B. And Artemis Fowl still has potential, darn it. The book series was such a breath of fresh air for young adult fiction, so please take what makes it unique in stride. I guess the point I'm trying to make is, Netflix, please buy the rights to Artemis Fowl and make a series in the style of Arcane with inspiration from the graphic novel, and make true adaptations of the book characters. Thank you, love you, goodbye.